Welcome to the Roundtable, everybody. My name is Robert Bannon. If you're listening to us on the Broadway Podcast Network or you're here watching us virtually on YouTube, I'm so excited. Two of my favorite people that I have ever interviewed. We interviewed Mandy during the pandemic. I've gone to speak to Javi. I love them. You love them. And we are outside of a bodega in the middle of Manhattan, which works for In the Heights. This is the most, you know, In the Heights moment we can have right here. Mandy Gonzalez and Javier Munoz are here. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I was like, what is that? And then, yes. Yeah, we, we're covering a foster care event at the town hall tonight at the red carpet. So yeah. 430, I figured 430 with you all and we just bounce next door. So here we are. Perfect. <laughs> it's a city. It's alive. I love it. It's, it's a, I want to say that Jersey... Everyone, Jersey, Long Island, anywhere that Mandy and Javi are coming, you need to hurry up right now and grab your tickets because they've been working on this show, tinkering with the show. Mandy, when did the idea come to you to grab Javi and hit the road? Oh my gosh. So I can't remember, Javi, the year that we did that benefit. And I, I always tell him because I always um, encourage him to uh, sing the song that he sang that night. But it was a benefit that we did for a school with Tom Kitt. And I have worked with Javi in two different shows. And, you know, we are dear, dear friends. But I've never heard him sing like he sang that night. And he sang and he blew me away. And I was like, okay, we need to sing together all the time. <laughs> and, um, and then that's when the idea kind of sparked. And I was like, what do you think? Would you be interested? And he said, yes. And then we just came together, which was very easy and exciting. Javi, you guys have done shows, the same shows, and you have known each other, but then to share stage in this way, what's it like to stand next to her and to put this show together and put the pieces together and go down this memory lane? It is absolute celebration. I mean, that's that's really what this is, is, is I mean, I think, I think in terms of, of Broadway careers that that we kind of lucked out a little bit, Randy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, in the Heights in Hamilton, not too bad. Good place to right. start. <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> you know, people watching may have heard of them before. Well, to talk about Memory Lane, I mean, Mandy, uh, your time at, at over at, at, at shows through the years, and uh, sometimes in green makeup and. <laughs> And sometimes with the sisters, you yeah. have, and then, you know, Javi, are you, you have no stranger Aww. to, to some staircases and, and, and bodegas in New York City. And, and of course, you know, th this juggernaut that was, that is, that is Hamilton. When Javi, you, you were with these shows from, from the start. What has, was it like to really be on this rocket ship for in the Heights and then in Hamilton and, to now look back at it, that it's removed and kind of see the impact it's had culturally? That's a huge question. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, I mean, so, so, so to, you start with In the Heights and actually both Mandy and I were there from the get. So we, we were part of the show for its, its developmental process into our residency at 37 Arts, which is now the Barishnikov Center. And then our Broadway run. So we share, we get, we get, we got to share that together. And, and that, that is light years different from Hamilton. Uh, well, how many of us were in the cast, Mandy? Like 26? Yeah. I think right. So. so I think 21 or 22 of us were making our Broadway debuts in that show. So like, just, just, just take that in that like this, this was just chock full of, you know, wide-eyed artists who were being represented so beautifully by the show, sharing our culture, not only with each other, but with our audiences and making our Broadway debuts together. So there was such innocence and there was such excitement and there was, there was just something so pure about that whole process and celebratory all the time. And then, you know, we get to Hamilton and not that we were jaded, but we, we'd all been around the block a few times <laughs> at that point. You know what I mean? And that's a very different thing. Like that was a different beast because early on, I know for me, I, I joined the process in like 2010, 2011, and it was six songs. And I just remember sitting in the room and, and Alex was, you know, Lack was teaching us the music and I'm sitting there and I'm going, this is great. Like, this is a, 
I know Lynn. This is this is like a new voice. And then you know, cut to the first time I heard Quiet Uptown, and I was like, I don't even know Lynn anymore. Who is this person? <laughs> like, this is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard in my life. And 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 so that that was that was something really different because you could feel from way back in 2011, this was gonna be something um, incredible. Not that we could predict what it was going to be. There's no way you could predict what Hamilton was going to be, but you could feel that it was going to be something incredible and, and just the joy of being part of that. Um, but I, I, you know, it's funny, Mandy and I just played a date in Philly and we were talking about this in an elevator at one point, like what, the, the ability to look back and see what kind of impact both in the Heights and Hamilton have had culturally. And it's like, you know, it, it's this thing where you, you know, as artists, we're just in it. Mm. We're in the process, we're in the work every day. So there's not a lot of distance from it to go, oh, wow, I did that thing. Until we come face to face with someone who wants to talk to us about what the show means to them someone who wants to connect with us about a memory they have with this. I'm getting chills because it happens, right? Like we get to have these human connections with people who help us see, oh my God, that's what this means to people. And that's when we have the moment to reflect and see like, holy moly, like this, this is pretty big. <laughs> Absolutely. And just doing these concerts uh, afterwards, we get to, to see that audience and that kind of grew up with us which is really exciting and to see, you know, where they've gone with their lives and they're so eager to share like, oh my gosh, I saw this at this age and now I'm doing this because I saw that show. And it, it means so much to us. And every show that, that Javi and I do together, we definitely incorporate uh, community. We bring up a local choir to sing with us. Uh, when we were in Philadelphia, it was uh, students at Villanova uh, College University. And, you know, just to hear the stories that they tell and, you know, it's it's inspiring. Well, I know I, I taught musical theater this summer at New Jersey Performing Arts Center in Newark. I teach fifth grade in New Jersey and real life teach history. They're obsessed with us. I, I get major brownie cool points because I get to, you know, hang out with people who've done it at Hamilton and get to be, they, you don't know the impact it has, especially on people who do not live in New York City, who do not have access or the finances that to listen to the albums, to listen to the music that you all have put a bit a part of is a part of the Great American Songbook truly now. And now you can see you both live. And I know the show that I, I live in Jersey. So like I said, September 29th, Performing Arts Center. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful theater. And um, it says here the music from Stephen Schwartz to Lynn Manuel Miranda. Mandy, how do you pick the set list? What are we going to, what is the show like? Tell us. Oh my gosh. I think, um, you know, our incredible musical director, Dan Lipton, we, we go and we rehearse and uh, we work together. And it's really, that's the thing that I absolutely love about concert is collaboration. And uh, it's about getting into the room and singing songs that, you know, shows that we have been a part of or shows that we wish we were a part of. And, you know, it's so it's exciting and it's constantly changing our show to uh, where we are and what we've done. I mean, yeah. um, both of us have gone and done other shows in the interim and we bring all of that to uh, whatever show that we're doing. It's super exciting. You can get your tickets through before we move on to mayoarts.org. You can get your tickets. I know you're going to be in Long Island at the Tile Center with someone that I'm sure everyone's familiar with. Mr. Miranda himself will be a part of that. We'll be, yeah. And they'll be there singing. So go to their Instagrams and go and get tickets. And you're, you have more dates that you're continuously adding. And you're literally across the country. We are. We are. We are. Really yeah, it's exciting. awesome. It's been a blast. It's been so much it's, fun. So and we're just, I, I mean, feel like we're just beginning. Yes, this is only the start. Are you going worldwide? This is it, Javi. What's what's it like to duet to duet with Mandy in the show? I'm sure there are moments where you sing together. What's it like to share a stage and a mic in front of a live audience with her and her beautiful voice? I tell you what. I mean, I I lo what I love about what we've created is it truly gets to celebrate our friendship. So, I mean, when we're in the moment and singing, we're just in the moment and singing. But there are times where I get to take a step back and watch Mandy do her thing and take the stage for a moment. And it's in those moments that I, it's it's the combination of all things. It's holy moly, this artist, but also look at my friend. 
Y'all, do you see my friend? Look at my friend. <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I'm so excited to be there. I I know that getting to speak to you both during the pandemic, Mandy, you were very outspoken. You you put out fearless, and, and everyone that's at, that's out there and about that have not heard this gorgeous, gorgeous album. Go stream it wherever music is streamed. It, it's beautiful. You you were such an advocate and outspoken with your cancer diagnosis and what you went through and during the pandemic. And Javi, I know that when we spoke, you were worried about never being able to perform again in the fear of being a, 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 of the health and, and being okay. And now that we've gone through these past two years and all this, this craziness, Mandy, does it feel different to walk on a stage now after all that you've been through and to be able to, to, to sing these songs in front of an audience? Absolutely. It feels, um, I think you're constantly growing. I think that experience was... Uh, growth times 10. And uh, I, I feel so lucky to be doing it with Javi, who I admire so much uh, through the work that he does for others. And, um, and it inspired me, really, that he was a big inspiration for me to, to be able to talk about uh, what I've been through. And, and that's why I just feel like music heals. And we never know what people that are in the audience, you know, at a Broadway show, at one of our concerts, what they're going through, that they get to have an evening where they can just enjoy and uh, and take a break from from everything that's going on in their lives. Beautiful. Well, Javi, thank you for making time for us. You're not at the UN today or speaking to presidents and mayors <laughs> and getting keys to the city and, you know, right. running the red campaign and the human rights campaign and, you know, just slumming it with me out here on 44th street but javi you and what's what's so interesting about javi is that i've i recently spoke to javi about some personal feelings thoughts help things and he is just the way that you think he is he is an advocate and a frontline staunch fighter for the rights of the queer community for cancer survivors for hiv aids for human rights period what's the line for you javi of art and and activism and what's the importance of how do they weave together I find no separation between the two and and I but that's a conscious effort because there's varying degrees of this kind of work right there there's there's folks who 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 can just purely put their focus on their careers and what they're creating and 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 the artistic expression that they're putting into the world and then occasionally give light to a cause that they care about and that's as vital as you know, going in the street and 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 tearing things down, you know, and, and all the extreme, you know, protest rally stuff and everything in between, right? So, so really, it's it, for me, I find no separation between my art and my activism. I try to choose things that I say yes to that are sort of reflective of what I believe in, um, that challenge. Uh, the not so pretty characters, you know, the stuff that challenge our I, our understanding of humanity, the imperfect characters, the imperfect situations, because um, that's my life, and that's what I kind of fight for is to say, is to say like let's let's just embrace all of it, right, and 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 not leave any and truly not leave anyone up away from the table. Let's mm -hmm. all have a seat here together, and then figure things out in that way. Um, and I, I really try to marry the two together. So I'm sort of in between, you know, there are a lot more radical and, and intense activists than I, and there are a lot more um, focused artists than I, and I sort of write in between. And it's, it's a happy place for me. It's really where I'm, I'm happiest. And, and I think the most important message I always try to, 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 to hopefully reflect and emulate is that whatever your involvement in whatever it is that you care about, whatever the cause or causes are that move you and motivate you to, to, to just want to make a difference, that there's absolutely no gesture that's too small. And that's not, that's, that's not me, you know, blowing smoke. That's real. There is nothing that is too small every given day that someone decides to do that is not going to make a difference. It's all going to make a difference. And so I really try to make sure that that that's that's how I'm activating both as an artist and as an activist. You, wow! I listen. You get all of these shoes, humanity, okay. and 
<laughs> there you <laughs> so we it's this you get all their humanity and you get their voices and you get this catalog of music when you buy a ticket to see their show in New Heights. It's it's amazing. Mandy, you know, when you look out in the audience, we're talking about activism, you see now these people that come to you, mothers, young musical theater aspiring stars that look up to you and see you as an alpha bar, see you in, you know, in the Heights or in, in, as a Skyler sister, and you see them, or you see grandparents or parents that have fought through cancer and have come to you and, and they've listened to your album. When you're up there and you're singing these songs, how do you both stay focused on the music and the professionalism because I would be a I'm gonna be a big puddle out there watching you both because you you've shared so much of your journey with us. We feel the triumphantness of the, the work that you're able to do. I think for me, uh music takes me to a, another place. And really I I see myself as kind of like uh, I'm a storyteller. And I feel very lucky to be able to, you know, I come from a long line of storytellers, whether they did it with their voice or they, they told me stories to, uh, around. But I, I think that I feel so lucky to be able to use my voice to tell stories and to move people through music. It just, uh, it takes you to that other place where it's just about giving and you forget about everything else. You're just in that moment. And I think that you know, I don't know. I, I I think that that's what it's about. It's about live live performance and really just being in the moment. And I hope that I allow other people to to have that experience too. Ooh, you that's you the sure word. Do. That's the word. Giving, giving. That's what it is. That's that's what you as an audience. If you're coming to our show, we are we are literally up there giving this to you. That's what we want, and we want that conversation with you. <laughs> Here it is. Here's the gift. Talk to us too. <laughs> well, I promise you that Jersey is going to show up and out. They're going to sing and yell and cheer and chat. We, are, we are gonna, I'm, I'm ready. I know the, the, they know the words to every single one of the songs that you're going to sing. And I want I everybody to. Know. Oh, they sure do. <laughs> they did last night in Philly. So, you see, know, Philly Jersey has to bring it. Jersey, Long Island, East Coast, you know, tri state, mayoarts.org. Make sure you get your tickets to the 29th. And I just want to say to both of you, uh, uh, watching your artistry and watching your humanity and heart as as police drive by in the streets of New York City and sirens go by, um, thank you. Because what you have done and what what you have put out there, it means so much. It, it really inspires us. It gives us so much courage. And we see a lot of ourselves in the work that you do, and it makes us be fearless. It makes us be not afraid to stand in our own light and our own truth. And I have learned so much and uh, uh, from the, the messages that you both have shared. I, I can't thank you enough. I think you both are not only a beautiful artist, but just beautiful people. You are really beautiful people. Oh, thank you, Robert. Thank you so just, much. Just, ah, they're stars. And we'll see you next week. The 29th. I'll be singing along all the words too. Everyone yeah. follow, follow Mandy, follow Mandy on social media and follow Javi on social media so that you can stay up to date with all of the dates and all of the work because they're just getting started. They, they have a lot more left to say and, and get your tickets. <laughs> thank you both so much for being here. I so thank appreciate you. So you. Much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Well, there you have it. We have, you know, I gotta, you gotta love in the Heights. You gotta love Hamilton. You gotta love theater. You gotta love Jersey. Mike's sitting across from me right here at this O'Donoghue's bar where we're sitting. Mike, are you going to, are you going to come on the 29th to the Mayo Center? Mike saw Hamilton like 16 times because he's independently wealthy like that. I've only seen it two times because I'm a teacher. Well, everyone, make sure you follow this week because we have really big shows. Wayani from American Idol is on. We're giving away tickets to see Monica and Way at the NJ Pack. So make sure you could go to our social media. It's at Robert M. Bannon or at the Roundtable with Robert Bannon. And make sure you're also watching and listening wherever we are. If it's on YouTube or if it's on the Broadway Podcast Network. I thank you all so much for being here. Until next time, have a good night, everyone.